Um, good evening, everyone. Welcome to fiscal year 2023 budget discussion meetings. This is the Ways and Means Committee of the Greenfield City Council. It is Tuesday, April 19th, 2022. It is 6.01 p.m. Calling the meeting to order. This meeting is being recorded and videotaped by the Ways and Means Committee and GC TV 15. If any other persons present are doing the same, you must notify the chairperson at this time. Okay, I don't see anybody recording. Uh, we'll have roll call. Uh, Councillor DeSorga. Here. Councillor Jarvis. Here. Councillor Taranzo. Here. Councillor Healy. Okay. And I'm Councillor Forgy. We have a quorum and we'll begin tonight with reviewing uh, the mayor's proposed 2023 budgets for um, what we're calling small departments, but they, they are nonetheless very, very important for us. Um, there is no approval of minutes, there is no public hearing, and there are no motions. So we're going to start this off on page 72. Um, I don't know if anybody is here from the assessor's office. Um, I do see the mayor is here this evening, and so if we, um, if, if we, uh, let me just look at this for you. If we have any questions or discussions, if there's anything that the mayor would like to say about the assessor's budget, I also want, um, I also want to say, I just read the very exciting news in a memo from the mayor that we have hired a chief assessor and that is great news. So with that, um, mayor, if you'd like to lead off the presentation, that would be great. Well, I heard my name being called as I was headed upstairs to get my budget book. So I'm going to maybe rely on Liz Gilman, who's also sure. here until I sure. get back. I'll that would be great. You know if I have anything to say, give me a couple of minutes. <laughs> okay, very good. Thank you, Liz. Looks like it's it's your turn. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks, Liz. <laughs> so I do want to say that before, um, Prior assess Chief Assessor Mew left, um, I did have her work on, help work on the budget. So she did have input into this budget. Um, but what I can tell you is what we have in there is a Chief Assessor, an Assistant Assessor. Um, with the, so the Assistant Assessor is a higher level position them anybody else getting the feedback yep okay yes. all right it's not just me okay um i don't it's somebody it's someone ever yeah. yeah yeah if i suggest everybody mute except for liz and that would probably help Let's see. Oh, so much better. <laughs> Thank you. Um, so the mayor's back, but what I was speaking of is what the staffing in the budget for 23 we have, which was a chief assessor, which is a chief assessor who we did just hire and an assistant assessor. And the assist having both those position is an upgrade because prior it was um, a chief assessor in an administrative assistant clerk position. So we have two higher level positions in this budget for the assessor's office and a less amount. And because of that, we have a lesser amount in contracted services. I'll just point that out. Um, and we're going to see how this goes. We don't, you know, we want to give the new chief assessor their opportunity to say how they would like things done and what is needed and what is not needed, honestly. Um, and this is someone with a wealth, wealth of experience. We are very, very lucky. Mm -hmm. So um, 
other than that, you know, the bottom line of the budget is not that large of an increase. Um, and again, the largest items is, is staffing in the contract and service. Everything else are, are really just small amounts. Um, software, Patriot software support is not in there because I believe the, um, that's over in IT now. So it really is just the contracted services and the positions, then there's very small amounts for attending meetings and subscriptions, memberships, very small amounts. Um, so I don't know if anyone has any questions on that setup. Um, again, I, I think we're looking for a lot of direction from the new chief assessor as to even in terms of software, because we've had some issues with the software, the Patriot software. Mm -hmm. So we're looking for directions from him on where he would go and um, how he sees the staffing, what we have here and how he feels it's going to work for him. Um, but I think this is really good. We were all truly impressed, I think with our new chief assessor. Um, I would just like a little bit of clarification, if, if I could, please. Um, can you break out those full-time salaries? What will the chief assessor get? What will the assistant assessor get? I, the assistant, I can probably answer for you. I don't know what just happened. We literally just hired. Okay. Um, the, the chief assessor, I would have to see if that's, where he ended up coming in at i i don't know um but curiously where's my detail here okay right here the assistant assessor is in at thirty nine thousand nine two one, and that's a 30 hour week by the way just so you know that, um that is that's that is eight. oh i'm sorry point eight that's, we call 0.8 FTE 30 hours a week, um, full-time equivalent. Okay. So that's the assistant assessor. The chief assessor is full-time. Um, I believe it's in the, Roxanne, maybe you can correct me. I'm going to have to look through emails. I believe the offer was in the seven, high 70s. Yes, yes, it is okay. less than Thank you. <laughs> it is less, if my memory serves me correctly, it is less than we budgeted, but um, it is in the in the 70s. Right. Thank you. And and again, we don't know if he's I mean, going to be I will be happy to get that figure for you, the exact figure, okay. um, now that we have hired him uh, for you. So I'm making a note and I will get that for you before, before you need, you know, soon, next day or so. Okay. Um, for members of Ways and Means, does anybody have any questions for Liz or the mayor regarding the assessor's office and this budget, this operating budget? I can't see all of you. Uh, it's Derek. I had to join via cell phone on my, on my daughter's softball game. So I am here just for the record. Just want to let you know. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Derek. That's a valiant effort. We appreciate it. Thank you. Okay. Gee, I think you went up before me. Oh, I just had a question. So th that 127.729, that is one full time person and a point eight. Is there another person in that office? No, there is not. Okay. And then the, the property. property assessments, the 80,000, that's RRG. That is correct. So that's less than a full, that's less, less hours, I imagine. Yeah, we're, we're in the process of negotiating because we have the two higher level positions. We felt that we could reduce some of the services. So we're in the middle of negotiating that with our RG. Perfect, thank you, that's it. 
Um, that was exactly the same question I was going to ask. So, <laughs> okay. Are there any more questions? Okay. Um, hearing none at this point, we will move to our um, treasure collectors budget and thank the mayor and Liz very much for the information they provided us on the assessors. <laughs> Okay, Treasurer Department. Um, let's see, that's Kelly. Kelly, good evening. I know you're here. Um, what would you like us to know about your budget um, and about uh, everything that's going on in your office at this particular point? Uh, my budget stays pretty much the same from year to year. Um, you'll notice there's some increases for salaries because uh, the clerical union and my union settled their contracts this past year. Um, so there's some minor increases for that. Uh, and there's also some increase for um, bond issuance expenses because we anticipate having to possibly bond again or maybe even we're we'll definitely have to do another ban next year. Um, and with the amount of money that we're taking out, it, it is expensive. So rather than trying to bank on premiums, which are not a guarantee to cover all those expenses, we wanted to build it into the budget to cover any additional costs for the library and fire station borrowing. Okay. But other than that, everything pretty much has stayed the same since last year. We're keeping our head above water with the staff that we have, which is me and two other people. Um, Outsourcing some of the printing and handling of bills helped a lot. Um, people taking advantage of more technology has helped a lot too. Um, I think through COVID-19, people learned how to do things online a little bit more uh, readily than they would have before. Um, so we're seeing less foot traffic in the office, which is helping us be able to operate with the three staff members. So, and I'm happy to take any questions you guys might have. Well, the, the first one that I would ask is, um, do you know the do you know the salary for I, for yourself and your two FTS? Um, I don't have it right in front of me. They're roughly at the same point. I'm at about seventy eight. Okay, thank you. The remainder would they're both at the same pay rate, the two of them. So, whatever okay. the difference is, divide that by two. <laughs> Okay, thank you. And also the longevity pay is per contract. Is that correct? Correct. And we all actually have just all of us hit our 10 years this past year. Wow. So congratulations. We've all been together for a long time. <laughs> <laughs> okay, thank you. Um, does anybody on Ways and Means have any questions? I one question. Yeah, since go ahead, I, Kelsey. You, you kind of hinted at that. Um, so since COVID 19, uh, what percentage of the people do you think now pay their bills online or has it, has that increased like 10 or 20% just as a guess? Um, I would guess maybe gotcha. like 20%. We see a lot more people. I think they didn't, maybe didn't realize they could pay it online for, for 50 cents. A lot of people were thinking like they had to pay with a credit card, which is much more expensive. Um, we also offer some new services through our online payment system where they can set up to have it automatically withdrawn from their account. Um, which also like, sends people reminders so that you don't forget to pay your bills on time. Um, so people are taking advantage of that a lot more because they don't want to come in in person. They don't want to necessarily set foot in the office if they don't have to. So, thank you. Any other questions for our treasurer collector? All right. Thank you so much, Kelly, for being with us this evening. We really appreciate seeing you. And uh, we'll be, we'll see I'll you be back again when we talk about the debt. So I'll be I'm right sure you will. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so that's a good segue. Moving on to uh, the debt, and um, I'm going. I will call on Liz first, and but I'm sure that um, Kelly will be involved in this as well. Okay. So let's go on to debt. Liz, you want to start us off? Um, I actually would have Kelly start because Kelly puts the, I, I do more of the big picture pulling together. Kelly okay. puts the, the, the budget for the, each of the payments into the, this operating budget. Um, but I'm going to pull it up here. 
Um, it was There's one no of our to discuss. I mean, the bud, the debt is the debt. Those are payments that we're legally obligated to pay. That's correct. So, um, we did bond this year as we've had um, prior discussion on, and so that's part of the increase you do see in the budget. Mm -hmm. Yep, bonded a portion of the library and fire station. I'm sure you guys have probably done that already. Okay. Liz, did you cut out on us? No, I, I was just thinking of what else, you know, this is the general, what you're seeing is a general fund portion. There are other portions of debt in water and sewer. Right. And set just okay. just so folks know that's not like grand total of all debt you know mm -hmm. it's the grand total of what is funded by the general fund okay um kelly is there anything else you'd like to add um no i mean i think we're i don't think we're going to anticipate bonding next year i'm not sure but we definitely are going to obviously with the continued work on the library and fire station. Um, we're gonna have to keep taking out temporary bands depending on when the library is finished. If it's done before next spring, um, we probably we may decide to issue a bond. It's it's we'll have to work with our financial advisor to see what the best timing is. It's all gonna depend on interest rates and stuff like that too, um, and how the market is at that point. Yeah. 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 Does anybody have any questions? Any members of ways and means? Wow. You sure it's very, that's very exciting. We could talk about it all night long. It is. It, I, I personally, <laughs> I love Dad. I love Dad. Uh, I want to go to sleep right now. <laughs> okay. All right. Well, thank you, Kelly and, and Liz. Thank you once again for helping us through this. Um, next, next up is uh, our recreation. Uh, department. I see uh, Christy Moore here as our recreation director. Um, I would like to ask you to tell us a little bit about what's going on. And also, <laughs> I'm noticing that, you know, there's not a lot in this budget. It's basically labor intensive. And that, that's, that's about it. So um, please share your thoughts with us. Let us know what's going on. Well, uh, good evening. I'm Christy, the recreation director. I see some new faces as um, city councilors. I've yet to meet you in person, but um, I'm Christy. Uh, can you not hear me? We can hear you. Oh, I thought I heard somebody say they couldn't hear me. Um, yes, as Councilor Forgey shared, my budget is very simple. It is strictly salaries. It's myself, um, my assistant director, and my program supervisor. And then we have some part-time hours. Uh, I hope this year to institute um, our after-school slash teen center uh, part-time position to help with some child care um, at the middle school age, now that we do not have the extended day program. Uh, our goal, as ambitious as it was, was to start that this year. But due to COVID and the lack of staffing that we can find to run our programs, uh, the three of us have been running our full-time job and also providing childcare for the community in the after-school programs. Um, longevity is pretty straightforward. Um, right now, I'm the only person in my department that gets longevity. So that uh, 1658 um, goes to me. And then the, um, the wages, as Kelly had said, uh, we're all three of us are in SSEA, so um, the wages indicate the uh, agreed um, change with our union contract with SSEA for um, wages. And I think the only other thing I would say is that I'd love to have more staff so that we can um, spread the workload. Um, but I understand that the city is always struggling financially, so we do uh, many additional hours to uh, run the programs and events um, and parks that, that we offer the city, but um, it is a passion of love, um, but it does leave us all exhausted. Glad to answer any questions um, anybody has. Christy, my only question is, um, what is your salary? Um, 
I don't have the exact, I think it's around 78 as well. Okay. And then it's um, 60 and then 42, I think, for the program supervisor. And that leaves 20, um, maybe maybe 21. Um, I'm not Kelly, I can't do those numbers as quick as her, um, for the part-time position. Thank you. It's good. Even if it's an estimate, that's good. Um, anybody ways and means have any questions for Christy Moore, our rec director? One question. Yep. Go ahead. You, see, you do it. You, you do a great job. Great job on that winter carnival too. Um, I have a question. Do, do you watch over the, your own revolving fund or is that the city that watches over the revolving funds, the recreation? Um, it's a combination. Obviously, I do. The revolving fund is where all of our expenditures um, come out of because, as you can see in this um, operating budget, there are zero expenses. So any income that comes in from uh, programs or events goes back out to support uh, staffing and programs, purchase, like we just purchased T-ball and Buddy Baseball equipment. Um, child care fund comes in and goes out for child care expenses as well. So it's an in and out process. So is the is the seasonal staff um, is that does that come out of that extra like twenty you were talking about, or does that come out of a different fund? That comes out of the revolving fund. The revolving yeah. fund, okay. Yep. So for instance, like everybody asked me about the swimming pool, um, the as you can see here, that there's zero funding for staffing. Um, so any fees generated from the swimming area goes into the revolving and it then goes um, back to pay lifeguards, gate concessions, uh, summer camp, that kind of stuff. Okay. Um, Councilor Jarvis, I saw your hand up. Nope, I uh, got answered. Okay, very good. <laughs> Thank you. All right. Um, if we do not have... Um, any more questions for Christy? We're gonna thank you very much and we're gonna move on next to the library. I do look forward to the skate park, by the way. That's pretty awesome. <laughs> <laughs> Glad to Me too. Hear Me it. too. <laughs> okay, thanks Christy, have a good evening. Thank you for being with us. Of course. Okay, um, let's see, we have, let me just move this thing up and down here a little bit. Okay, um, next on the agenda, we have the library. We have our library director, Ellen Boyer, with us this evening. Welcome, and we're looking forward to you sharing your remarks on your budget. Um, let us know, let us know what's going on and what's on your mind. Okie doke, thank you for having me. Um, <clears throat> so my budget is, Salary heavy. We have 10 full time library employees. Four of them have been here 10 years or longer. We have four permanent part time employees and we have eight. We call them per diems, but think of them as substitute teachers. They're substitute librarians. Mm -hmm. um, and with the new contract. Um, Everybody got a raise, long, longevity increased. Um, and because the library is open after five and on Saturdays, my staff who works nights and Saturdays gets a shift differential that is also um, negotiated in the contract. <clears throat> and unlike Christy, I do have money for supplies and library things. We have money for books and AV materials and magazines. Um, the city also funds the library's membership in CW Mars. That's the Central and Western Massachusetts Automated Resource Sharing Network. Um, it connects almost 150 libraries in Central and Western Mass. Um, so we all share collections. We share a patron database as well as a bibliographic database. We have daily, excuse me, daily deliveries between the libraries. That's all part of the CWMR's funding. We have very little money for um, 
repairs and maintenance to the buildings and grounds because this budget will go through the last couple months that we're in this building and we're not doing anything that doesn't absolutely need to be done here. And when we move to the new building, for the months that we're in there in FY23, we better not need any money for repair. <laughs> Um, the one difference between my request to the mayor and her approved budget was that I was hoping we could add another part-time person to the staff. Um, I've been, since I knew that we were going to get the new library, I've been trying to prepare the staff, the staffing levels so that we can operate in a building that's almost twice the size of the current one. Um, some things like the design of the building itself will help with staffing. We have great sight lines you can see from one end of the building to the other end, both upstairs and downstairs. It won't be like this building is where we have little rooms and nooks and crannies. <clears throat> so that will help with supervision and staffing. We're also <laughs> self-service options, which we don't currently have. Um, you'll be able to self-service check out, take your materials home. Uh, we will have laptop vending machines so that my staff doesn't have to issue um, laptops to people who need them. We'll have those in addition to hardwired PCs. We'll have a machine that checks materials in for us so we don't have to do that. So a lot of, a lot of design elements were incorporated to make sure that we could keep staffing levels as low as possible because we all know that staffing is the most expensive thing to run the city. <clears throat> um, any questions on the budget? Any questions on the construction project? So I'll go with a, I'll go with budgetary questions. I okay. you said you have ten FTEs. Could you repeat the? the roster of employees that you have? We have 10 full-time employees. Okay. Or part-time employees. Okay. And eight fill-ins, per diems or substitute, however you, okay. whatever you want to call that. A lot of those people were working for us full-time or part-time and chose to, to step back a little bit and just be on call where they can say no if it's a nice day and they want to go golfing. <laughs> hey. Whatever. Uh, Skiing in the winter. Whatever. That's a luxury. Um, could I just ask what your salary is? I'm sorry I don't have it right in front of me, but it's mid-70s. Okay, thank I you. Have, I have it if you would like it. Yes, please. It is 74,970. Thank you. I'll get more in the middle than that, do you? <laughs> um, any other, any of the, who's, who's, who else has got questions for Ellen? I have a quick question, Councilor Healy. Great, thank you, go ahead. Um, with the larger building and footprint, do you think that your staffing is gonna be adequate for a building, you know, much larger than what you're in now? Um, so I mentioned earlier that I have been working towards that since I knew we'd be getting the new library. For example, Councilor mm -hmm. Healy, when I first started here, we had one person in the reference department. We now have three. Um, mm -hmm. We have a teen section in the new library and a maker space which will primarily be used by the teens. Last year, we added a new staff position. We added a teen librarian. We had never had one before. Um, and this part-time person that I was hoping to get this year, but I'm not, um, <clears throat> would have been the third person in our children's department. We currently have one full-time and one part-time person in the children's department. I was hoping for another part-time person there. So I believe with, with the design elements and the self-service options that we will be okay, but I am hopeful that at some point we will be able to add 
additional staff to the children's department. Um, I'm thinking that that's going to be a really busy place, um, very different from the layout that we currently have. I think it'll be a huge draw. And I'm a little concerned that one and a half people in that department isn't going to be enough to provide this kind of service that I would love to see there. Absolutely. Yeah, my I, I just had my kids used to love going to the, the puppet shows there. So <laughs> just wait to see what we're gonna have there. <laughs> oh, I'm excited. We adopted a four year old daughter, so she'll probably be interested in those pup puppet shows still. Oh, my older ones not so much. <laughs> yeah. Wow. Wow. That's Do all we... I have. Thank you. Thank you. Do you, does any, I just need to ask a question about your state aid to public libraries. I'm not remembering, I'm not even sure I've seen it. Can you tell us what that figure was? This year, we received $39,000 from the state aid program. How much? 39,000. That's all. That's all. Yeah. That's all. Okay. And I do want to let you guys know, since you brought up state aid, State aid is not um, a given. You have to meet certain criteria in order to receive state aid. Let me see if I can find those for you. <clears throat> you have to serve all residents of the Commonwealth. So we can't refuse anybody who lives in the state of Massachusetts service from the Greenfield Public Library. Um, we cannot charge for normal library services. Like Christy can charge for all our programs. We can't charge for our services. We have to be open at least 50 hours a week over at least five days, and we have to be open some evenings. You have to have a library director who has a master's degree in library and information sciences. You have to spend 15% of your municipal appropriation on materials. Mm -hmm. And this is the big one. This is the one that Liz every year would say, no, 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 go away. I don't want to hear about the waiver. <laughs> <laughs> you have to increase your city appropriation to the library every year. So anytime I'm asked to level fund, Anytime every department is asked to level fund, it's really difficult for the library. If we level fund five years in a row, we lose our state aid, we lose our ability to belong to CW Mars, which would be devastating for us. We lose our ability to plot to apply for grants. We would not have gotten $9 million for a construction grant if we did not meet that criteria. So it's always a juggling act. I like to just make sure we meet the required level of spending and not too much over because that's determined by a formula. They take the last three years of your city's appropriation, take the average of that and multiply it by 1.025 to get the number for your next year's budget. So thank you, thank you. Two years in a row, I've had to apply for a waiver. If you approve the library's budget, at, as the mayor has suggested, we will not need a waiver, and that's a really good thing. Any other questions about state aid? I know the $39,000 doesn't seem like a whole lot, but when you consider if you don't meet those criteria, then we're really in trouble. Um, we would be a standalone library, essentially. And mm -hmm. you could do it if people already had not had the, the wonderful privilege of belonging to CW Mars. If people didn't know any different, I guess we could do that. But they do know different. And it would be really difficult. Thank you. Um Sure. Anybody else have questions for Ellen? Two questions. Okay, go ahead, Councillor um, Sorga. So, and the state aid that you receive is that is that for expenditure on anything in particular, Ellen? Um, not. We can spend it on anything we want 
we can also carry it forward. Mm -hmm. um, so we try as, as much as is humanly possible to bank some of it, to carry it forward. Um, <clears throat> we haven't been very successful at that. Okay. All right. Um, and my second question, does your, your full t your employees, the staffing that you gave us, do you have any custodial services? At, or have you in the past? We okay. do, but the custodians in Greenfield work for central maintenance. Okay, fine. Um, George Vandalinder is their boss, and if he's coming to talk to you, he'll talk to you about the number of custodians he has. Okay, very good. Thank you. Okay. If I have any concerns about staffing the new library, it would be the custodial services at the new library. That's actually where I was going. Yeah. Councillor DeSorger and, and Councillor Forgey, that is under the DPW budget mm -hmm. currently. Thank you. I, I just wanted to ask if I may, um, you, were, you were mentioning the percentages that need to be uh, given to supplies. Is that what you were like uh, out, of, out of the number that you were just, the, the statistics you were just reading off to us? Um, to continue to get the, the state aid, you were saying a certain percentage of it has to be for materials. Materials, okay, books. right. I eat books. So, so you were you saying that you needed to get a waiver the last year or two because you weren't getting the funding appropriate for something like that? Yes. So I was noticing the drop in the the 2021 to 2022 on the supplies and books, and now it seems to be back up at a yes. yeah. higher level. Okay. Yeah, because salaries we have to pay. So mm -hmm. if the if the municipal allocation remains level, I have to pay the salaries or let people go. Um, but you can use your state aid to pay for um, books. You can use, we have trust funds, the library has trust funds. Um, we use a certain percentage of the income that those trust funds generate every year for materials as well as the municipal appropriation. And so if you end up using the state aid towards the materials that doesn't factor into the percentage that you were talking about that needs to be from your municipal appropriation, correct? No, it does. Oh, it does, okay. Yes. So you okay. take your municipal appropriation, you have to spend 15% of that, but they don't care where it comes from. Okay. Would like to write a check for that? <laughs> it, <laughs> could, it could be personal donations, interest from trust funds, state okay. aid, or um, the small revolving fund that we now have. Okay. Yep. I just didn't know if it would be like an ongoing uh, wheel that if you weren't getting the appropriation from the municipality that you would be essentially even if you were just making enough to get the state aid you would be essentially using that to ensure your funding to stay above that threshold you know what i mean yep yeah i i know exactly okay. what you mean all right <laughs> i don't know if i was explaining it well enough. okay uh council yeah that just one. So you mentioned that the director has to have a master's degree. Did you That's say? Correct. Yep. Yep. Okay. I just like to point out because uh, uh, Councilor Forgey asked you what your pay was. Um, so I would like to just add that that's um, a pretty guard on good deal for somebody with a master's. What we're paying you. So I'd like to uh, just throw that in there because um, that's. For, for a master's degree and you're going to pay that. So we're getting a great deal and you do a great job. Thank you. <clears throat> All right. Um, any other questions from Ways and Means? If not, okay. Well, thank you very much, Ellen, for taking the time to be with us this, this evening and to also explain to us um, the state aid to public libraries and also the project itself. We really appreciate hearing about it. So thank you very much. You're welcome. All right, we are moving on um, folks. And next on the agenda is the Council on Aging. And I know I've seen Hope McCary here who is the Director of Council on Aging. 
and I'd like to turn this over to her at this particular time so she can let us know what's going on and uh, some of the other pieces. I'm looking for your paperwork here. Um, and so Hope, I know you're out there, um, but start us off, please. Well, good evening, everyone. I just want to check in to see if everyone can hear me. Yes. Thank you. Um, I want to thank the Ways and Means Committee uh, and my sister departments also for being here tonight. Um, it, it, you know, the video meetings are, are getting hard, but here we are. Um, we are fully in person at the Senior Center, and we have been since uh, about uh, June, July. Um, we, uh, we don't have a trust fund. <laughs> we have 2.8 staff. Uh, and about 0.5 of those staff are funded exclusively by uh, the Department of Elder Affairs. So that leaves the remaining staff to handle, you know, whatever else comes up. Uh, my position is the only one that is funded full time by the city. The others are subsidized by this uh, Executive Office of Elder Affairs grant. So. You know, we're doing really well. We're open. We're serving the seniors. We're thrilled to be open. Uh, are our numbers where they were before the pandemic? No, absolutely not. But we served almost 700 people this fiscal year um, with over uh almost 11,000 visits to our building uh this is not an estimate this is with our tracking system uh we've served almost 2,000 meals to seniors we've offered almost 100 creative aging programs our fitness program has close to 200 people in attendance uh, with over 400 classes so far this fiscal year we have several new partnerships with other city departments, including the Greenfield Police Department. We're very excited where that's going. Um, you know, we did, we put in for a position this year. We put in for a full-time social worker. Um, most of our other municipalities of our size have that position. Um, when we moved in to our current building for which we are very grateful by the way because it's a wonderful new building and it's safe and it has good air quality uh, but when we moved in we had four staff and now we have three and um uh chairperson forgy will remember when she was the mayor we actually had five full-time staff mm -hmm. So I just want to say that we are very thinly staffed in our department. We are, however, extremely lucky to have a experienced staff with longevity. Um, and I'm going to mention, because you've asked other people about their education, I am a registered nurse. I have a bachelor's degree in nursing. I hold current certifications in ServeSafe, which is kitchen manager, group fitness. I'm a certified personal trainer and I'm a newly certified wellness coach. I have an introductory level certification of FEMA, which I wasn't really looking for, looking for, but nonetheless picked up during the pandemic. And I'm certified, I have a certification in older adult mental health. So I can tell you that, uh, you know, we're, we have all the qualifications that we need. My staff has all the qualifications that they need, but there are only so many hours during the day. So we are acutely aware that our building is called a community center. And we understand the frustration by the community that it's not a community center. However, there are 2.8 staff. 
uh, even just to do the business hours. So we wish we could do more, but we're at the same time incredibly proud of the work that we've done. And my staff, I'm so proud of them. And I have a couple board members here tonight. Uh, Marcia Stone is here and Pat Jordan is here. Uh, we've all worked really hard to, um, sorry, to make sure the seniors have what they need. We were so incredibly happy to reopen after the closure. I can't tell you the feeling that that was amongst the seniors. Um, and that still continues to this day. And so when we talk about, I, I think probably before the pandemic, people didn't really think about the social recreational aspect of what we do. It was more like, okay, how many, how many meals are you serving and how many pounds of food are you lifting? But social recreational, you know, we had almost 500 different people come in just to hang out, play cards, go to a movie, see friends. It's, it's, it's immeasurably valuable and we're really proud of the work that we do. I would really like to have a social worker to fill in the gaps of what we're not able to provide, filling out mass health applications, helping seniors homebound with certain um, aspects of just growing older. Um, you know, fuel assistance applications and SNAP applications, all of those things. We did put that in our budget. Um, it's not to be this year, we understand. Uh, we've always said that we wanna be part of the solution and not part of the problem with the city budget. Uh, I recognize that all of our sister departments, the library, you know, my kids went to the library and my new granddaughter's gonna go to the library and hopefully sign up for, um, you know, T-Ball and all those wonderful programs. Uh, we appreciate all of the other departments, but my job here tonight is to advocate for the seniors and what they need. And um, is it enough? We'll do the best we can. And I welcome any questions. Um, well, I would uh, thank you very much for that. Um, I would like to know what your salary is. It's approximately 72. And actually, I am hearing about my my sister department heads uh, with different salaries and um, maybe looking at negotiating that a little further, given my educational background. I have, Councillor Forgey, I have the number. You would Thank like you. it. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you. $74,118. And there is an accrual that is added in there. So. Okay, thank you very much. Mm -hmm. um, I'll leave negotiate. I'll leave salary negotiations to you, Mayor. But in the okay. meantime, I think it's important that the public understand uh, where everything's at on our salary scales. So, if thank I, you. If I may, um, Councillor uh, Orgy, um, Hope is a member of uh, is not a member of a union. Some people here tonight who spoke, Christy and um, uh, Kelly R. Uh, she is an NR, as in non-represented. And I believe we've sent you all an email with an yes. explanation. Yes, Good. yes, that, that was, and that was wonderful. It was greatly appreciated. So thank you. Um, okay, uh, Hope. Um, we'll get back to you at this point with the committee, Ways and Means. Does anybody have any questions they'd like to ask our um, Council on Aging Director? I have a, I have a question. Sure, go ahead, Jenny. Um, so there's the long-term effects from COVID, like the social isolation and just probably health, lack of exercise, et cetera. 
um, I think there was a lot of state aid given to schools for recognizing the long-term effects that COVID had on, on our, our children. Was there anything that came to senior centers as a result of that? Did you get Thank anything you. from the state? As a result uh, of this, the repercussions of COVID? Yeah, Counselor DeSorger, that's a great question. Nothing specific. We are very lucky to get state aid from the Office of Elder Affairs at the state level. That amount this year was about 48,000. Uh, a good portion of that goes to backfill the salaries of my mm -hmm. two staff. Uh, it also covers our um in in large part our free group fitness program so you mentioned the the fitness aspect and you know being stuck at home for all of us but especially for the seniors people lost a lot of ground physically um we had people that were in our advanced aerobics class that are now in my chair class um which is great because people are still moving but uh, yeah, in terms of the state aid, we didn't get anything extra out of the, um, the pandemic situation. Thank you. I just, it's a large population and I, I, pr I know that they lost a lot of ground. I know yeah, that. I mean, there are over 4,000 seniors in Greenfield. Yeah, mm -hmm. for sure, they did. All right, thank you so much for all you do. Any other uh, members of Ways and Means that would like to ask Hope the carry questions before we let her go this evening? Okay, thank you. Thank you so much, Hope, for um, your presentation. It's important for us to understand um, what is going on, and this was very enlightening to us. So thank you very much. I appreciate the opportunity. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, um, moving on, we uh, are going to talk about energy. Yay! <laughs> Yay! So, <laughs> so uh, our representative for energy department is Carol Collins. And Carol, welcome this evening, and let, please enlighten us. Let us know what you're thinking about. Well, thank you for having me, and um, I... I'm unlike most of the other departments in that uh, we're very labor light as most of the budget is related to utilities. And um, it actually wasn't until I got to the meeting that I realized I, I'm going to be talking about solar, even though I didn't think that would be the case. But uh, I know you want to know when things change. Um, so we have one big change that Liz alluded to when she gave her presentation a few weeks ago. Um, that there's a, a general increase in the energy department budget and that is because of the solar farm that's on the landfill uh, had a it's known far and wide as the best deal ever for solar and so for the past 10 years we've been paying one penny per kilowatt hour for half of the municipal electricity load so that saved the city about two and a half million dollars in the last 10 years and now I have to break the horrible news that the gravy train has left the station and <laughs> in year 11 starting July 1. So the good news is we're still below what the electricity price is, but it is going to be an overall increase of almost and again, you know, it's ballpark. We don't know how much the sun is going to shine yet next year, but it's just under $200,000 total. But as you may know, Liz said that the increase is about 134,000 and that's after moving lots of doing everything we could to pare back our budget. So there is an overall increase, but I'm not done with solar yet because we do also have a new solar project on the well field, as many of you may know. That's just become operational toward the beginning of this year and that those credits are it's the same kind of arrangement it's called a ppa or a power purchase agreement and so we have a great rate on that and those credits are being applied to the wastewater treatment plant which is the largest electricity consumer in the city 
and that's to help kind of, um, you know, it's on the well field, it helps offset the water and sewer enterprise, but that's not in the energy budget. So it doesn't get balanced out there. So even though we're having a big increase, there's a, and I know you've talked to Marlo, so I don't know if he mentioned that he's got a lot going on, but um, that's where that's gonna show up. And, um, and then otherwise I would just say, there's, uh, you know, some things that fluctuate as they do from year to year. I try to keep my eye on it and keep plugging away at projects that will um, help continue to save money long term. And um, I know it seems that we're talking about salaries and um, currently I'm a one person department and um, the assistant position has been vacant since the end of last year. That's uh, I haven't filled it yet because I've just been um, too busy and not knowing it was a position that started when the department started. So all of this was created from the ground up. I think we've done a bang up job of it, but um, there's things that I now know that I would do differently. So we're trying to move forward with um, filling out that assistantship with uh, tasks that are uh, better suited to, to the department's work. And um, so that's where that's at. If we're talking about education, I also have a master's in science and sustainable development, and I'm a lead accredited professional. And uh, that is working on making buildings green, as anyone on the library or fire station has uh, endured me <laughs> pushing at getting, we're getting there. And um, I don't know if there's any other questions, but I'm well, I'm happy to answer them. Okay, so right now I'm showing on I'm showing this um, as seventy thousand five hundred ninety two dollars as your current salary. That's yeah, correct. correct. Mm -hmm. okay. And there is a negotiated request uh, in the budget uh, from the mayor to make it seventy three oh ninety eight. That is correct. Okay, thank you very much. Um, I also want to just pause for a minute and say. We don't see you too much, um, but we do appreciate everything that you do uh, in regard to making us very sustainable. Uh, electricity, I, you know, it, it just, it just, everything, everything just keeps going up, but I really feel great about having you in charge of all of this. So thank you very much for the work you do. And then I will open it up to uh, our counselors on ways and means. Any questions for Carol? I did have one question, Chris. Sure, go ahead. Um, it's more, it's it's not by any means any kind of critique or anything like that. It's just a curiosity that I see that the um, the electricity figure for the, the John Zahn is uh, even in excess of like some of the schools that are around that have been around for a long time. And I was just curious out of, it being like uh, a much newer building, is there? Is it just the type of systems that are in there that that create more of an electrical cost than than others? Um, and, and I'm just naive to the the workings of it. Is it more just relying completely on electricity rather than there's no natural gas or yep. anything else? Well, I can give you the long answer or the short answer. I'm sure you want the short one, but uh, <laughs> you you it's exactly that. It's an all electric building. It, it is incredibly efficient. We measure everything in energy use per square foot. It's called right. EUI, energy use intensity. And in terms of the John Zahn Center, it's one of our most efficient buildings in the city. So okay. even though it's using more per dollar, than than the schools, it's performing much much better. So overall, right. it's uh, much more efficient. And so, um, if you, yeah. Anyway, that that's the main reason. Yeah. If I added the other utilities on electricity, it would end up blowing up the number. Is what you're saying? If you more do like, gas and electric, and right. yeah, yeah, factor all that out. Okay. Gotcha. And just, I'll just make a pitch uh, on the city's website are building dashboards and each year mm -hmm. that gets updated and shows the energy usage of each building by electricity and gas or fuel type in the case of it being all electric. So gotcha. you can kind of follow that. Okay, thanks. Sure. 
Anybody else? Um, Ginny, go ahead. So I'm going to follow up on that. So, which I hadn't thought of going back and forth with them. That's interesting that that's doing the best. So that's our most efficient is, and would the high school be right behind that as it's, no? I don't have the list in front of me of the EUIs off the top of my head, but okay. I would just say that our goal with existing buildings is to be under 40. When I first started, we had buildings up to 200, which is seriously bad. And uh, we now have all of our buildings except for two that are hmm, under like 50 and almost all of them are 40 or under. So we've done an incredible amount of work to reduce the energy consumption and it can get into, you know, splitting hairs, but, you know, each of these buildings is a different square footage. Mm -hmm. You know, there's different systems, there's uh, different fuel types. So this, mm -hmm. the way we do things in the dashboards brings everything down to a common term and everything's in the same um, units so that we can compare them. And again, <laughs> Oh, I'm sorry, Carol. So, Councillor Forgey, I can answer um, Councillor DeSorger's question, if you'd like me to. Sure. The, the sure. high school is, if I'm reading this detail correctly, the high school is at 60,000 uh, for this year, for the coming year. So that's what our, that's what we budgeted. And uh, the John Zahn is at 20. Uh, but there's a vast difference in usage in that building in terms of how long it's open and there is also a vast difference in the square footage so as as um carol has alluded to so there's it's difficult to compare one building to the other both of them i am sure are very efficient i'm not that familiar as carol may be as to what other systems are i don't believe it's an all-electric building but i could be wrong about I, I do know, okay. um, but I don't know if you want to go into the detail of it. The high school has very efficient electric systems and it uses very little gas for heating. So with the new high school we use, you know, there's 28,000 budgeted for the whole building for gas for heating and that's 170,000 square foot building. So it's pretty amazing. We also have solar credits applied to that. So there's, there's a lot of um, inputs with with these numbers but uh we could try to play a game of guess that building by the square footage i, I, yeah. I think i can no, do it's all right I, I won't make any but i won't ask that tonight how about on on with the increasing cost of gas and and propane um how are we going to be do you have concerns about that with the budget coming up you know that that, that it won't be because you had to put this budget in at some point Right. Like November, December, I don't know when it had to be in. Yep. So um, that's a great question. And, uh, you know, I always say I'm looking into a crystal ball, except we are, you know, we secure contracts for longer term. So right now we know what our electricity price is through uh, the beginning of 2024. So that's great. It's, you know, 9.879 cents. And that's part of Greenfield Light and Power available to anyone um, so I know what to budget based on the kilowatt hours. Whereas previously when we didn't have long-term contracts every year, it was trying to wait till the new rates came out, uh, with our gas, we currently, and you know, I, I, I don't really like to, part of the reason you don't see me is I'm working so hard all the time, but, um, <laughs> <laughs> the other part is, uh, I'm just, I don't know. I just keep doing things and I hope that the you know, news speaks for itself. Um, but I, I mean, one thing that I think is really uh, kind of a big deal is that if you listen to other towns, they're struggling every year to make ends meet. And part of that is because of these escalating energy costs. And we're not dealing with that because I work really hard to keep our costs down, to upgrade our buildings, to take advantage of, you know, I pay for almost everything through grants and incentives 
getting great contracts. It's like a multi-pronged approach, but we currently have, in addition to having the one penny solar farm that literally like every solar developer I've ever talked to is like, is it true? Because it's legendary. Um, <laughs> it's, the same with, it's the same with our gas price. We, we locked into a long-term contract that will expire this year. I'm looking and hoping, but we've already, I think we'll be okay. And, and it's not gonna go up much over what it is now. But again, it's sort of like the solar farm. We have the best deal. Literally we get, you know, calls from people like that can't believe how great our gas price is. And that in part is because we've reduced our usage so much. But um, so it, it's very likely that it's gonna go up a, a bit because it, it's just, we did so great, we can't do any better, but I'll keep trying. But I think we'll be okay. And propane is only really, I uh, I don't even know if it's any generators. It might be one generator and then it's the temp fire station. So we're looking at one more winter and I, we just have to like grit our teeth. It's a tent, you know, we, we budgeted for it. It's high, we're doing our best and, and just the new fire station is gonna be wicked efficient and we'll be budgeting a heck of a lot less for fuel. Thank you. Councilor Jarvis. I'd just like to say, Carol, I was going to say, you are probably one of the most underappreciated departments within the city because people don't know what you do. You're so far about you, you hide behind the scenes and um, just listening to you with the fire department made me and, and the two bu budget years in a, in a row here made me had a better, a, a gray, a, a great uh, appreciation for, for the, all the work you do. You work hard and that's right. We don't see you a lot because we know you're working hard. And I would just like this. I'm going to say thank you for everything that you do and for all the hard work. And, and we definitely get, you know, you're probably the, the, um, the hardest work in one horse and pony show around. And uh, we definitely, <laughs> get our bang for our buck out of you so thank you for all you do and thank you for what your department does thank you very much i appreciate it i'm just really glad i don't have to be on the other end of any negotiating session <laughs> she is the lead negotiator on and i'm glad that it is the electrical companies and the gas companies and all those people aren't we all glad about that <laughs> thank you thank you Anybody else from Ways and Means? I did want to ask something else, Chris. Um, I saw that I noticed the uh, the high school was uh, significantly higher last year. Um, was it was it like an uh, uh, a higher uh, prediction than what than what actually came through? That's what I was just wondering because I see that before it was. Um, like 55,000 in 2021, yep. um, that was budgeted for almost, you know, like a 50% increase in that. And now we're back down to right around 60. I didn't know if that was because we were like making contingencies for things or what it actually came through in 2022 as of now. Well, you're, you're keeping me on my toes. Thank you. <laughs> um, and you picked up on that, that, that I did decrease it $29,000 this year. And I'm a little nervous doing that because I feel like oh, I must be forgetting something. But I looked, you know, when I do this budget, I, I have like four plus years data so I can look back at trends. I know what pricing is. I know what usage should be, things that are planned, things like that. Anyway, I felt really comfortable that it's been lower, um, surprisingly lower. It does get the largest solar credit of any of our accounts currently before the um wastewater treatment plant. So I feel confident that that I can cut that amount out and, and that will still be within budget. And then I play a game at the end of the year and I try to be within $100 or $1,000 of any big account. And so that's how I have my fun. <laughs> do we, is there, do you know, or I mean, maybe Liz would know, um, do we know how, how, what are we about nine months into the year? Uh, yeah. How close we are to or, or what what the standing is in comparison to the eighty nine thousand that was there is it is it a lot less is it more like I, in the forties fifties? So that's one of the things that uh, it's it's a little too early to start tabulating that stuff, and I usually do it after the April bills are. I'll basically because the winter's over, and even though that's more um, usually gas heavy than than electricity, 
by that point, I can kind of gauge where we'll wind up with our accounts. So I will definitely do that. And uh, okay. normally I know, but not having That's an okay. extra person, I'm, I'm <laughs> as up on the monthly numbers. And the last thing I wanted to bug you with, um, just because this is right on my street and I've been watching the crews go back and forth for the last year and a half, is the um, the electricity being turned on on the, the Millbrook well field, uh, okay. which is pretty, pretty exciting to not have them coming up and down the street anymore. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, the, what the, I, I was just curious as to, I see that what it's projected to save us, mm -hmm. is that again for like another 10 years? And then... I know you said it was kind of similar to the dollar deal, not quite as sweet, but, uh, and then what, what, if anything, what was the investment we made into that, um, that solar field? Okay. So the great thing about a power purchase agreement, just like on the solar farm, there's no cost to the city, Beautiful. You know, a little bit of legal fees for reviews, but, um, mm. minimal. And then basically the developer pays for all the development, uh, everything, and then we negotiate our deal at the end of it. So okay. that one is going to create 1.8 million uh, kilowatt hours of electricity a year that gets credited over to the uh, well field. And then we pay a 30% discount off of that, which is really good right. for today's market. And uh, and it's for 20 years, 20 year term. 20 years. Okay. Yeah. Great. Thank you. Sure. Okay. And I'm done. I'm done. <laughs> Great. All right. All right. I'm ready for Jeopardy now. Okay. <laughs> um, thank you very much, Carol. We really appreciated you being here with us this evening. Thank you for a great conversation. And uh, we will see you again, I'm sure. But thank you and keep up the good work. We appreciate so it much. very much. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, uh, uh, last but uh, not least is our city clerk. Um, she, Kathy Scott, will be here to present to us all the different budgets that she's got uh, in her bailiwick, which is clerk, council, registrar, voters, and elections. Yeah. So we'd like to welcome you, Clerk Scott, um, and uh, please. Uh, let us know what you're thinking about and um, okay. go ahead. Okay. Um, so as Council Forty said, in the under my umbrella is the council clerk registrar's and election budget. Um, the council has one full time employee. That person's salary for FY twenty three will be approximately forty one thousand four hundred dollars. Um, the other three employees are all under the umbrella of the clerk's office. There are two full-time employees. That would be myself and the assistant clerk. Um, there is one part-time employee that will be 30 hours in the FY23 budget. Um, my salary for FY23 will be approximately 66300 ish. Uh, the assistant clerk's salary will be approximately $53,800. Um, and the part-time 30-hour-a-week employee will be approximately $32,000. Um, I had hoped to have the <clears throat> part-time employee of 30 hours for thirty-seven and a half, dollars um, but that was one of the positions that you know, had to go by the wayside from full-time to part-time because of the reductions that needed to be made this year. Um, the biggest difference that I see in the council budget is it now includes a line of $10,000 for legal, which is wonderful, and I thank the mayor for including that very much. And I just want to let the councilors know that that's not going to get you very far. <laughs> it's just a drop in the bucket. Um, and legal legal is expensive. So we're going to use it sparingly, um, if my opinion counts on anything. Um, the, the biggest difference in the clerk budget 
there, there really isn't any. Um, salaries have increased. The other three employees in the office are all under contract. Two are in the SSEA. One is in the C union. I am the only NR employee. You've been asking about education, and I cannot tell you that I have a degree from college because I don't. Um, I have 25 years of municipal experience for the city of Greenfield. Um, I am currently going to school to the New England Municipal Clerks Association and Academy. If COVID hadn't hit, I would have my certificate by now, but COVID hit, and so now rather than having finished my three years, I'm going to start my second year, hopefully in July. Um, other than that, the registrar's and election budget basically depends on how many elections are coming in the next 12 months. So that does fluctuate up and down for home worker salaries and what we need to pay to get our machines tabulated properly. Um, that's really all I have. Thank you. Just I'm, I'm I'm reading a little bit here. Um, does anybody does anybody have any questions for uh, Clerk Scott? Anybody on Ways and Means? Hmm. We interact we interact with um, with Kathy on a basic daily basis. Uh, <laughs> some of you us know, interact more than others, but we. We yeah. do depend heavily on Kathy, and I do want to say that mm -hmm. she does a great job in balancing all of our needs. Um, are there any questions? I, I don't have no questions. I just a comment. Thank you so much, Kathy. You do an unbelievable job on this and on the elections. We're very lucky to have you in that. Um, all of the praise goes to the other people in the department. Uh, they're the ones, you know, Tammy sees to, to all of your needs. Um, Geneva does absolutely everything. I don't even need to question if she just does it. Um, and Kate, who is unfortunately leaving us, who is a wonderful administrative assistant, um, she's just spectacular too. So I can't, I can't praise them enough because if I look good, it's really all them. <laughs> <laughs> well said. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. If there are no questions, um, concerns, comments that are left after this meeting, I'm just looking around here. Uh, Mayor? Yes. If, if I may sure. uh, address the Ways and Means Committee and others who are on here. Um, it, on your agenda, it says small departments. They're not small. And, uh, <laughs> as you have heard tonight, uh, they are not. They are small. <laughs> they are small but mighty because um, in every way, they do the work of taking care of the taxpayers and the residents of Greenfield. And I think they have represented themselves well um, as, uh, as they always do. Uh, and as you know, many of them have been around for a while. So, um, we appreciate, um, no one appreciates them more than I do. Um, with that said, I do have to explain, and I, um, I want you to understand <laughs> the dynamic of this. Um, in order for us to balance our budget this year, and I think I've said this before, I said it at, at the presentation a couple of weeks ago, but I want to reiterate it tonight because each and every one of these people have so spoken so eloquently about the impact. Um, and um, it was, as I mentioned a couple of weeks ago, one of the hardest things I've ever done because I, I felt that impact. I had to cut $800,000 out of the original budget that would have been presented to you if I had not done that. 
And I think if you think about that, the magnitude of that number, that was not an easy task. Um, and it did, it, it affected new positions as each one of them have said to you um, in nearly every department uh, uh, here. Uh, that goes from the police department um, to Carroll to a number of departments. Um, so as you begin to deliberate the budget um, in, a, in a couple of weeks or maybe next month, I guess, in, in terms of the operating budget, just keep that in mind um, because we, um, and we do have a mixture of um, both people who head our departments who are parts of unions or are members of unions, sorry. And, um, and we have those who are in ours and um, I have to uh, negotiate their salaries each and every year. It's a function of the mayor's job, not, not me alone. So just wanting everyone to understand that um, I did not want to deliver the news um, to, to Carol or to Kathy or to Ellen or to um, um, the other department heads who will appear before you. But I had to, and that's my responsibility and my um, uh, way of saying to all of the city councilors um, that this um, is not the budget I think I've said this more than once that I would like to have presented to you, but it is the budget that the city of Greenfield and the taxpayers of Greenfield can afford. Thank you. I appreciate the opportunity to be able to say that tonight Thank in particular. Thank you. Thank you, Mayor, very much. Um, okay. If there are no other comments, concerns, any other old business, new business, anything that anybody on Ways and Means wants to bring up, then I'm going to ask for a motion to, oh, I'm going to wait before I do that. I am going to announce that our next meeting will be Thursday, April 21st, 2022 at 6 p.m. via WebEx. I will ask now for a motion to adjourn. So moved, Jarvis. Second, Toronto. Okay. Motion's been made and seconded all in favor aye. Aye. aye okay good night everybody thank you all department heads for being with us this evening we really appreciate you taking your time to help us understand your budgets so good night everybody we'll see you thursday night